at an early stage so that we can confirm within the crew team or what would uh, the final document would look, look like. So, um, so That's my point. Thank you, Izumi. I guess it would go underneath four, but I think also a suggestion I'd like to make is, you know, we probably can keep the lines open for new suggestions that would be coming in probably until the time we have to submit, but I'm not quite sure if that's realistic in the sense of finding consensus on the final document and making sure that all the editorial changes are sufficient for everyone. Thank you. Sure. Understood, Paul. And I see Narani's hand up. Thank you, and hello, everyone. Um, just uh, a quick addition to that. To uh, I, I was going to wait, but it fits in with, with Paul's comment. Um, I think we should probably send a reminder to the global list that the um, co comments on the second draft, that that deadline uh, expires uh, at 23.59 UTC, just to give people a reminder that today, now is the time to comment on it, but also to make it clear that, um, yeah, what the timelines are for, for, uh, for this week. We don't want to, uh, I think it's important that people are clear about what the timelines are so that we don't end up having discussions about big issues at the very end. I also think that uh, it might be good um, possibly uh, after the end of, of this deadline, very soon after the end of the deadline for um, uh, comments on the second draft, but uh, to for you as chair to um, send out a mail about where we think we have consensus so that that is very clear to the list uh, and it's clear what we are what that we are only working on editorial changes um, yeah this week thank you thank you Narani um yes so I, I think I um both your, both of your points make very much sense and it's certainly I, I I certainly intended to do that. So uh for this uh, um this stage we want to send out the conclusion of our discussions early and then I I I did actually send a reminder of the deadline, but maybe it wasn't very um, obvious in the way that we send uh, we say that we will be closing comments after this date. So um I would uh and reminder with this message that, um, well, the deadline is this. In other words, we are not likely to be incorporate any new comments after this date, and we're quite strict about it. So I, I will send this message after the call. So um, thank you for those points, um, Nirani and Paul. So uh, perhaps uh, based on Paul's suggestion, it might be better if we move agenda item four as agenda item five after we are clear about uh, uh, the group team position per issue, so we we know what to add on um, on the draft um, proposal we will be submitting to the ICG, as well as any of the very um, editorial purely editorial changes. So uh, we will first discuss um, two, three, five, four, and six in this order. Um, please let me know if any of you find any issues with this. Okay, thank you, Andre, for the support. So um, now I'd like to move on to actions review and. Um, so first, uh, with the minutes of the meeting. Um, so I think up to the um, up to the eighth meeting, we have the notes posted on the in our website, and we still don't have the notes from um, the meetings afterwards. And um, would uh, Herman be able to give us the status on this? Uh, they are in production. So we sorry for the delay, um, but uh, yeah, work in progress. Noted, and uh, thank you. And I, I really understand that um, you're, you're all working on very, uh, very, very tight um, schedules between the meetings. So um, I understand about the status, and we, we do provide the recordings. So um, I think it, we, we can move on to another um, actions review. Um, so which is to be um, and our all crisp website improvement. So. Um, I, I think Herman has already updated um, the NL website based on our, our discussions at the last call. 
then I'm, I'm seeing a few um, additional inputs from the Chris King members. Uh, so would Herman be able to give us an update on whether you're not um, on your plan, whether or not to accommodate any of the additional um, comments? Um, so we, I just uh, uh, made the changes sent uh, by Friday, um, and I need to really to uh, catch up with some of these uh, inputs, and I really need to check what's or what of those are really micro uh, management of the website and what could be a response to personal personal preference. And uh, but uh, I need to check uh, carefully what uh, what the input is before I can commit to. Uh, to implement them. Um, what I have done is has, what has been discussed and suggested and agreed by Friday. Um, I, as I said, I need to check what's happened during the, the weekend, if, during the weekend, if there were more, more inputs. Oh, understood. And Ronnie. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Herman. And, and uh, as I said, I realised that we are all working on very tight deadlines here. So um, my suggestions are uh, uh, the the motivation of my suggestions is simply to make it very, very clear to people. Uh, number one, what is the latest draft? Number two, what is the timeline? And number three, how do I um, how do I contribute? Um, and I don't necessarily need any of my suggestions to be accommodated uh, precisely, uh, and of course I trust the NRO Secretariat to to do what they can in, uh, on the website. So there may suggestions to try to to for, to improve uh, um, interaction from the community, but uh, I don't need response on on every single suggestion. So thanks. Thank you, um, Nurani, for this um, uh, clarification. And uh, generally, I think the concept of what Nurani has um, shared does make sense to me that we, we, are, we have to be clear on the information. So I leave it to you, Herman, um, how or whether to incorporate this in, uh, to the NRO Secretariat um, in addition to the resources that you're available. Um, and actually, I, I realize I haven't sent out my um, reply to um, on this, which I, I thought I did. And one additional point that I would like to add is, I think there's a description about the Christie mailing list which says closed. And um, I understand this is read-only uh, mailing list, but I do have some hesitation about the use of word closed because it does imply like not very transparent process. But I'll send this on the mailing list rather than discussing this on, on the call. And again, I'll leave it to uh, you, Herman, on how whether to incorporate any of the comments. So thank you very much, Herman, for um, your effort and also the NL Secretariat. So if nobody else has any additional comments, then I would like to move to um, 2C, HTML and text versions. I'm not seeing any hands, so uh, I'll move to 2C. And then, um, so I think um, Alan has already helped us uh, send the text version to the global um, AI analyst um, of our proposal. So thank you very much. And um, Alan, I think you've also been working on the HTML version. version so um, would you like to give any update about this? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I generated HTML versions by uh, saving the document from LibreOffice. It's, it's very easy. It's just got a menu option for that. Um, and I generated text versions by post-processing the HTML. Um, however, after I did that, I noticed some errors, which I had mentioned in email. Um, it, I was working from a redline version of the docx file. And I believe that LibreOffice has some bugs in the way that it handles red line changes. And uh, so the results were incorrect. And I did send a message on the mailing list asking for somebody to send me a clean version of the docx file. Uh, but nobody has done that yet. So I repeat my request. Please could somebody send a clean version of the docx file and then I will regenerate the HTML and text versions uh, to correct the errors that were present in them. 
Thank you, Alan. Um, I wonder if Michael would be able to do this, um, send the clean uh, word version to the list. Thank you, Michael, that um, agreeing that you can do this. So um, I hope this will um, address the issue for you, Alan, and you can uh, move on to uh, work on the X, um, HTML version. Okay, thank you. Um, it, it'll just take me a few minutes after I uh, receive the docx file to generate new versions. Thank you, Alan. Uh, sorry, another point. Um, the PDF version on the website includes an extra table at the top with um, version control. It's got links to several previous versions. Um, if possible, I'd like a, ver a, a copy of the docx file that includes that table so that it can also be included in the HTML and the text. Understood, and I wonder if that part has been added by Herman or Michael had already worked on that. Herman, uh, I, I can send that to you right now. Um, I, I, it's, I, it was added by me. Perfect. Thank you. So Michael will send the docs, uh, um, the 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 word files, um, including the the proposal part, and then the ta tabulated part, including the date and the links to past document, um, is uh, going to be sent by Herman. Thank you very much. So um, I think Alan has uh, acknowledged that that this is fine. So um, let's move to 2D. So metadata in our doc file. So I think uh, Alan's point was that I think there's some um, information saying this is a document of the RIPE NCC and things like that in the in the document, and we want to address this part. And I think Alan has been working to um, address it. So uh, again, Alan, would you be able to give us an update? Okay. Um, no, I, I haven't been working to fix it uh, because I think um, Michael has control of the, the master version of the document. Um, it was my intention simply to, to raise the issue uh, so that we can discuss it and fix it. Uh, so essentially, if you go to document properties, um, there's something there about the document title, and RIPE is mentioned in that place. So I think we should just change it to, to say that it's the CRISP team's uh, proposal. Um, and there was also a document property which said that the company name was the Internet Society, and I, I guess that could also be removed. Thank you, Alan. So um, could that be addressed um, in the doc file that um, you will be sending, Michael? Maybe you want to confirm what, what exactly it is before doing that? but. Um, so, Alan, so you're talking about uh, what shows when we're viewing the PDF version. That's correct? Uh, no, I don't think it appears in the PDF version. Um, mm -hmm. But if you load the Word document, and then if you go to the um, document properties menu, so I think you click on File and then click on Properties, a little list of things appears and the, the information that I'm talking about is in there. And uh, it does not show in the printed versions. However, it did appear in the HTML version. And so that's how I noticed the problem. Oh, understood. So it doesn't appear in the PDF, but then when you try to convert um, from um, from the, docu the, the Word version to HTML version, then it uh, appears. Um, and then, so um, you're suggesting that we remove this from the Word version um, of this document. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's right. So if we remove it from the Word version, then it will be correctly reflected in all the other versions. As far as I know, you'd, all you have to do is uh, go to File Properties and just look at all those properties and check that they all make sense and remove or correct the ones that appear to be incorrect. Thank you, Alan, for clarifying this. So uh, I think it would be helpful, Michael, if you, if you could work on this. And if there's any point that is not clear, then I suggest that you confirm with Alan. 
Well, would that be okay? And do you feel that you can work on this, Michael? Thank you. Great. Um, so I think we're done with agenda item uh, two um, from A to D. And uh, so let's move to um, three, so confirm discussion status. And um, first I'd like to um, see if there are any additional points being raised on the RIR list that is not being shared on the global list. So I noticed that Nurani shared uh, one um, editorial suggestion that was made from a red community member, which she has forwarded on the mailing list, um, on the first team mailing list. And uh, anything else from your, uh, from any of the regions that uh, it's worth sharing at uh, here? I'm not seeing any hands. And um, from the APNIC region, I did re receive a, a comment individually from a person from the APNIC that they have no further issues with, with this. Uh, document and I was um, asking them if they would be willing to share this on the global mailing list and whether they are comfortable with this and um, it, it's up to them uh, whether they express it so um, um, we'll see if they do. And uh, thank you Alan for confirming our um, no discussion on an acronym list but um, you, you did know to support that's great. And um, different comments sent to co-op and um, um, right region has, um, has asked to, to be forwarded to, to the analyst. Thank you, Paul. Okay, they're waiting moderation, understood. Thank you, Paul, for this update. So if there's no update from um, other regions, I'd like to cover um, the points that are being listed on the global list. And I think I've listed all the major points that is still under discussion on the global list in Agenda 5A to E. And then I would also like to um, add verbally here that um, three of the points that are being raised by, um, sorry, I think I'm seeing um, hand from Nurani and her man. So let's go to Nurani first. Sorry, just a very quick comment about uh, Paul's um, comment there. Uh, whoever, I'm not sure who is uh, responsible for the moderation, but maybe you can uh, just let those uh, mails through so they can uh, get to the global list as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Nurani. And I believe Herman may be following up about this. Herman, please. Yes, it's for me. It's about this uh, topic. I cleared before this call. Uh, three comments that were held by moderation uh, because they were not members of the IANA transfer list. Uh, one were from uh, Gerard Ross, and one from Niall O'Reilly, and one from Nick Hillard. And the three comments are now in the in the uh, IANA transfer global mailing list. You should be able to see it there. Thank you, Herman. Um, I'm actually accessing remotely, so not in the best environment, but if anybody um, noticed that they're not being sent, then please share on the chat so that uh, maybe Herman can check. So thank you very much, Herman, for working on this um, and addressing this. Um, and so let's move to agenda item um, 3B, so on um, the status of globalist. So um, as I mentioned, I've, I've try to capture all the um, continuing discussions on the global list uh, in 5A to, A to E. And, um, but what's not listed here are the three points that, is, that has been raised by Richard Hill, which I be believe is now resolved. So one of the points was he was saying that there's no um, sufficient uh, consensus in, the, um, on, in our process. And uh, it doesn't seem to be bottom up, and this should be reflected in section six. And uh, there was a lot of uh, opposition to this observation, and I did confirm in the summary that um, this proves the point, and uh, our point that people tend to raise um, comments um, when they have concerns, and this still proves that we is bottom up. No further comment from Richard. So I believe this uh, issue is resolved. 
Another point is the issue about um, why we're not considering the NRO as a possible um, option of the, as the IANA operator. Uh, again, no further comments from Richard regarding this point and um, uh, based on my summary. So I think we can assume that uh, this point is resolved. Um, the third point is to clarification whether um, ICANN bylaw does not need any changes um, uh, because um, ICANN board approves the uh, global policy. Again, I explained our position based on the 10th call. No, no further comment from Richard. So I believe that uh, we can consider these three issues to be resolved. Um, does anyone have any other observations related to these three issues that I've listed? I'm not seeing any hands, so um, let's then um, skip agenda item four for now. We'll come back to this later, but uh, let's cover agenda item five. So we'll first go to um, dispute resolution, and um, I haven't had time to um, to. Uh, I haven't given sufficient time for the NL Secretariat to put this up on the website, but I did send my summary of the current status on the um, team mailing list on each of the issues that are being raised, what the issues are, and the Chris team position um, on each of these issues. So I'll verbally explain, um, but um, you can check from uh, the detail from our mailing list, the Chris team mailing list. And for those of you who are not members of the Chris team, uh, you can check from the archive uh, with the title that says summary of discussions point for each issue. That's what the my, uh, the, my email is about. So um, let's go to um, talk about the dispute resolution. So there have been comments made by, um, no, it's only raised by Richard Hill. And um, he, he feels that we should be more clear about arbitration um, process, at least what kind of scheme would be used. Um, so, up, for example, us, ICC arbitration in neutral venue. And another point he's raising is that um, we should be uh, specify the substantive law that will appear to the new uh, contract. So, regarding the first point, I'm um, observing a comment from Chris team member that they're not comfortable with going into the details of a particular arbitration process. So maybe arbitration in a neutral venue would be a, a sort of um, acceptable uh, alternative, but no, should, no further details more than this should be um, described because we're not experts in the law and we, we may not be correct during this time. We haven't had time to give them um, sufficient input from the community. So I think that's the rationale behind this. And um, so um, Andre has expressed that you support this proposal. So to be clear, you support this proposal Yes, um, that neutral to be agreed and not go any further than this. So that's my understanding of Andrew's point and also Paul's um, point, and I see hand from Craig. Jimmy, I actually have an issue with neutral, and, and the reason is this, um, you know, all the RIRs between us cover the entire world. Um, so oh. it is going to be difficult to actually specify a venue that is neutral. Um, it might make sense to say that you know the arbitration process has to be impartial and and independent, but that's that goes without saying. So, my preference really is to leave the wording as it is currently, um, because it gives us the most flexibility um, in terms of working out a, um, a jurisdiction that that is the most appropriate, that's acceptable to all the RIRs and to ICANN. So the words at the moment says uh, ICC rules of arbitration in the jurisdiction of Bermuda or such other location as is agreed between the RIRs and ICANN. Um, and really, I think that's, uh, that's my preference to not make any changes at this point. Um, I think what you've described, since we're a little bit more detailed, I understood your point, Craig, uh, about stating it as neutral and, uh, and then uh, being based 
specific. Just to be clear, I think what you quoted uh, seems to be a little bit more specific than on what is uh, described on the uh, on the um, current document um, that we're proposing. So, um, would you be able to type this so, so that everybody is um, able is clear about the level of conflict that you and and I think everybody is in general agreement with this direction, not to go too much details and then. Um, Michael is agreeing about your point about mutual, so um, I'm just wondering if you're okay with what's suggested or you prefer to add what you quoted. So um, I, to confirm what's suggested at the moment, um, I tend to be a little bit slow in copying and paste. So would anyone be able to uh, copy and paste the, the exact part um, so that everybody can see what's actually being described and um, that uh, we're, we're comfortable. Um, I'm sorry we're going into a little bit details of this, but I feel that we feel very comfortable with um, the, the actual wording. So um, would anyone be able to post on, on the chat the, the current wording and we'll confirm um, whether we're comfortable with the current wording. So um, the current supposition for um, this is that we, we go ahead with the current wording of what's being described in the um, in our proposal, and and then um, the details are to be considered by the RIR legal team. So I think that's the um, that's the our consensus that we have. The reasons for giving more flexibilities and what's most appropriate among the RIR legal team. And so, if no further comments, um, I would like to um, move move to agenda. Um, Agenda 5B, and um, it would still be helpful if somebody could uh, have a copy and paste on, on the chat the exact wording. Um, so 5B, so this is details of the SLA, and I think a couple of people have uh, made some comments about this. Oh, sorry, I think going in, before going into 5B, there's another point that Richard has made. Um, I'm not sure if this is only for the um, arbitration, but he thinks that um, applicable jurisdiction specification of the substantive law that will apply to the new on contract SLA should be clear. And um, but he doesn't seem to be saying that it should be defined at this point in time of a proposal. He's suggesting the community should give them or uh, give the RIR legal team some guidance. And then uh, the community should have the opportunity to comment on whatever the RIR legal team has come up with. So, um, my observation about this is that the Chris team generally agrees on the direction to consult the RIR communities about the SLA, but not, not necessarily at every step. And there are two text suggestions that are being made, and um, I, I'll, which I'll paste uh, over here. Oh, no, just no, no, copy and paste. Oh, sorry, my copy and paste is not working. But so, um, so for the for the call today, I'd like to confirm if we agree with the general direction in adding that um, RIRs will consult um, the community about the um, SLA text before um, the SLA will be finalized. So I'm not seeing any hands, and so I would uh, consider this a consensus. We simply add that uh, we will work on, um, we will consult the community uh, about the SLA text um, before before we finalize. So this actually leads us up to uh, 5B, which is details of the SLA, and um, so Richard is saying that the text format should be submitted. But he can accept the mechanism where the community, including this, um, the IANA globalist, is asked to comment at later stage on the text of the contract or SLA. So I think this is covered in our earlier consensus point that we will be consulting our community before we finalize it. But the only part where I'm not very sure is about whether we should consult this um, IANA globalist in addition to the RIL communities. 
Um, do people have any uh, comments about this? I'm not seeing any hands. So um, could we add the IANA global list in, in where we No need to mention that. Why would we do that? It's part of the community. Yes, I think that's consistent with my personal um, understanding as well. And I think this, the RIRs are the stakeholders, are the direct stakeholders of this uh, part. And um, it doesn't really make much sense that the um, people. And then I think people who are not. Um, I mean, the RIR process is open to everybody. So if people are interested, they can actually, you know, uh, join the process in the um, RIR um, communities, and we have mature enough process, um, which is what Andre is saying. When it comes to consulting with the community, no need to specify details. Um, So um, let me just uh, confirm. No need to do that. Is there no need to confirm um, consult the RIR communities? Is that what you're saying, Paul? And is that what you're agreeing, Andre? So Andre, please. No, I think I'm fine with. I think it makes sense to consult the community. But I think uh, in our proposal, I wouldn't specify details as what kind of mailing list or what kind of mechanisms to. Uh, involved in consulting the communities because we have these processes. I mean, that's, that's the whole, uh, you know, kind of area governance model that we, we know how to consult the community and therefore uh, I think we don't need to specify specific details here. Understood and I think it's a good point. So let's just say that we, we consult the community. And then I think that should be sufficient. We already have the existing mechanisms, as you uh, pointed out. So I think we've covered um, um, Richard's point about the details of the SLA. And he seems to be saying that this could be an acceptable alternative to um, giving the draft details of the, um, the SLA. So hopefully that will resolve the, um, the issue. And then there are a couple of other people who have raised uh, comments about the SLA. One is from Jim Wright. He did specify that this is, uh, he still supports the proposal, but he's skeptical about the practical, practical, I'm terrible at pronouncing this, practicality of a single contract between the IANA operator and five RRs in a post NTIA world. Um, I think this can uh, be discussed uh, when we consult the community what format of the um, of the contract would be the best if he, Jim has any comment about this. So, um, hand up from Paul. Jimmy, as you can see in principle, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with this and I think it's a, it's, uh, I can see others uh, doing that as well. I just don't want us to fall into one potential trap <clears throat> and that is to give the impression that we're going to give this whole SLA for the community to approve. Because I really don't think that that's something we've done in the past. And I think this is probably would be left up to the RIR operator. Naturally, the input from the communities, as, as Andre has very nicely put, this is totally part of the governance structures that we do. But I'm wondering whether we should be a little bit careful how we're phrasing this, not to put it that we're asking for their approval from the whole community on the whole SLA, if you know what I mean. Walking through step by step building this SLA with the community. I think that would be, I'm, I, I would like to know what exactly we're agreeing to here. If I could, thank you. Um, totally understand your point, Paul, and I, I do share your uh, concern as well. I see a hand up from Nirani. I see uh, Andres agreeing with Paul. So, Nirani. Thank you, and, and, and I and I actually think we, that we're in agreement. I interpret um, uh, Alan's um, comment as well about you know that it's not realistic to consult in every step of the process. Um, so I think I get the impression that we're in general agreement that we expect consultation, but I mean it's neither realistic nor uh, nor. Um, constructive, I think, to to uh, have the community do a group edit on a contract. 
Thank you, Narani and um, Alan, please. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, we need to be careful what we say here. Um, we we don't need the community to be consulted every step of the way. I, I expect there'll be some sort of negotiation between the legal teams of the RIRs and the legal teams of the IANA contractor, and we don't need the community to follow that step by step. But when they do come up with a final proposal, I, I think it would be useful for them to uh, check for community consensus. Um, but again, we need to be careful how we phrase that. Um, we probably don't want the community uh, to to nitpick that um, too much. We don't want the community to derail the process by um, you know, too detailed comments. So I don't have a suggestion for words, I'm afraid. Thank you, Alan. So, um I think you're saying that we we don't want um, the community to go, hey, this uh, this condition should be implemented rather than this or something like that. But it may be worth confirming with the community if there's any element that we've agreed which is not incorporated in in the draft and things like that. So it's more like similar to final documentation check when RIRs implement the policy. It's not adding any new element or proposing like a specific implementation or procedure, but just to make sure that uh, what's described is in line with what was agreed. Um, so that, I don't know if that uh, correctly um, describes your point, Alan, and I, I'd also like to hear uh, feedback from others about this, because I, I do um, notice that this is different from the usual policy development process. So it's, it's usually the part where RIRs are left to, with the actual documentation. So um, I'd, I'd like to first confirm from Alan if what I've described is, is a fair description of what you intended. And then um, if it is, I'd like to hear feedback from others about this. So, Alan, first, um, could you confirm whether what I've described is a fair um, understanding of your point? Uh, yes, I think so, Izumi. The community needs to be consulted, but not every single step. Thank you. Um, and then I see um hand from Andre and Paul. So, first, Andre. Yeah, thank you, Zumi. Yeah, I would I would avoid uh, terms like consensus or checking with the community, something like this, or even approval. I think uh, I like the phrase where we say expectation and where we say consulted. I think that's that's wide and and descriptive enough to underline that community will be consulted, but at the same time leaving the actual process of consultation up to the areas as we usually do. So I think I'm quite happy with this formulation. Thank you, Andre. Oh, Paul. Alan and Andre have stolen my thunder. Fantastic. I agree with them. Great. So um, I think this is very, very important that we phrase it right. So um, I would like to ask for volunteer um, on the wording for this. And um, um, is there anybody who is willing to volunteer uh, on the exact wording on this part? I'm not seeing any uh, volunteer at this stage, so um. Is it me? I, me... I can I can work on uh, oh, on great. some text for this proposal. Yeah. Wonderful, Thank Andre. Thank you for volunteering. So Andre will be drafting the text on um, describing how we will go through the community consultation uh, before fixing the SLA. So thank you, Andre, um, for volunteering. So then uh, let me continue with the points related to SLA. Well, I'm so con I'm conscious that we are, we are left with um, 15 minutes, but I would like to get this through uh, today uh, in uh, today's call as much as possible because it's important that we agree, we have an agreement on the issues listed, unless anybody has any concerns. So, um, 
I think so. There's another point that is list, um, raised by uh, Jim Ray that he he has he seems to comment about the format of the contract, and um, so I think that's another point that maybe perhaps I I don't I don't know if it's appropriate um, to con to ask from scratch about the the form of the contract and. Um, um, but since he, he's not saying that he feels strongly about this, um, perhaps the way forward is that we just acknowledge that he, he's made this comment and um, thank you, and he, he feels that it's not important at this stage to be addressed. And then maybe right community members um, of the fresh team can uh, um, talk to uh, Jim Raid and uh, uh, maybe confirm where, where his concerns are lying from, and then um, maybe we can try to to see if if he has any particular concern that should be considered at the, at the time of the FLA. Maybe we can take that as a reference. So um, Alan is saying just respond to him. No need to change the document. Yes. So I think that's uh, what we'll do for Jim Ray's point. And uh, Jared has, um, well, this is, he's basically agreeing with, uh, with our approach. And he's simply just, uh, just giving us additional rationale behind why, why the way forward of not detailing the SLA um, would be a pragmatic uh, point um, to move uh, forward. And he did make a very good point, but um, I don't know if we want to refer to the points that um, he's raised, or we just simply say that um, say describe our rationale um, as we, we we discussed at the call today. So um, does anybody feel that we it's, it's useful to refer to his point? Um, I'd like to um, ask for your opinion about this. And if there's no strong uh, position or support this, or support for this, maybe we simply um, we, we simply just explain a position based on what we discussed at the call today. I don't know if people are able to read um, what it is. So um, if you're able to follow our team's mailing thread summary of discussion point for each issue. And then this is what's listed under B, details of the SLA. Um, and then it's uh, quoted under Gerald Wolf. A hand from Narani. Thank you, Jimmy. I just thought for transparency reasons, I should declare that Jared, Ho Jared Ross is my spouse. So therefore, I will eject myself from, uh, I think most people are aware of that, but I'll eject myself from the discussion uh, at this particular point just for to avoid any perceptions of of um, um, of bias. Thank you. Thank you very much for raising this Nirani and I think it's very helpful for our transparency at purpose um, that you've clarified this. So um does anybody feel that we should actually refer to Jared's comments um related to SLA in um, um explaining our position? I'm not seeing any hand or comment. So um, if there's no specific uh, support for this, then I think we'll just simply explain based on what we discussed at the call today um, without reference to his, uh, to his uh, particular comments. So I think that's what we'll do. And um, 5C, um, there's a question um, raised whether the contract is absolutely necessary as a part of our proposal, and then uh, possibly maybe there are alternatives such as um, MOU. This is a point being raised by Pinda, agreed by CERN. And, um, and uh, I think our conclusion is that, is that the contract is necessary, but I would like to give uh, more uh, better um, rationale behind this, perhaps uh, it's more convincing if somebody with a legal background would be able to um, um, give it an explanation about this. 
And I'm not sure we need to share this at the call today in details. Um, so first, maybe I would like to ask somebody with legal background um, what, what we'll uh, explain, and then maybe this person to um, give us a, a specific well, on how we'll explain. So is anybody willing to give us a very brief explanation? Um, I'm not saying, yeah, that would be great, uh, Craig, if you don't mind. W would you? I think we've answered this one before. Um, essentially, um, agreement uh, agreements are just, you know, if you and I agree on something, it's, it's an agreement. But not all agreements are enforceable uh, in a court. And enforceable agreements in a court, in a court is called contracts. Um, but so there's some agreements that are enforceable, and there's some agreements that are not enforceable. But I, but really, I think that's a lot of detail and legalese, and um, I feel that that answer, that that question has been answered sufficiently on the mailing list from what I have read. Um, and I, my sense is that we probably don't need to go over that that ground again. Um, I hope that answers it for you. Okay, so um, I'm I'm fine with that conclusion. I, I it just think that uh, Sun has raised this uh, after there seems to be an agreement between um, Richard and uh, Pinda about this, and then I think afterwards Sun has said were well, actually raised on the mailing list. Uh, this is the point that he was supporting, and um, he probably is waiting uh, for an answer about this point, which is why I raised. Um, so, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Zumi. I think the other point really is that, um, from my understanding, traditionally ICANN and the RIR communities have been reluctant to, set, to enter into binding contracts. So a lot of the documents that we describe as MOU, some of them actually say specifically that these are not intended to be uh, it intended to create legal relationship and it's not intended to be enforceable or binding. Um, but I think in this particular case in the SLA, um, because it replaces the, um, the NTIA contract, I think uh, our community expect us to have a legally binding contract. Um, and so, uh, so I think you know traditionally where we have been reluctant to enter into a binding contract, I think that has gone out the window. So we do want a binding contract because it replaces a binding contract. Thank you. I think that's a really good point to make. And I think we haven't answered this as the first team. Richard has answered, and then in the past, we, we confirmed the position. We, have, we haven't really replied to the mailing. But I think this is quite a, an, an essential part of the, uh, the, uh, the proposal, and it would be helpful um, if Craig you would be able to answer to this point on the mailing, list, um, which would clarify things. Uh, it's clear that Christine has a position about this, and um, thank you, Craig, for agreeing with this. Um, Alan, you're saying the ethnic community are for binding contracts with uh, SLA. Um, so you just add uh, sharing this for our observation, I believe. But if there's any additional element that um, needs to be discussed or clarified, then uh, please let us know, Alan. Uh, no, that's that's just for information. Um, I didn't see that on a mailing list, but I seem to remember that that was mentioned in a public consultation meeting. Thank you, uh, Alan, for this reference. So I think uh, we've covered about uh, Agenda 5C, which is about MOU contract and necessity of the contract. Um, so let's go to 5D, which is selection of the review committee. Um, and um, so this is the point that was raised by uh, Sun Ujedeji, um, and he was asking why uh, NLO and C is uh, referred to, and um, and um, why there's no um, why there's no mention about um, we're following the process similar to NLO and C. He doesn't. Um, after my explanation, he doesn't seem to be have further issues about not clarifying that uh, we we will follow similar process to the NLO and C. 
but it has further um, um, suggestions, um, which is to have uniform membership requirement and uniform selection process. My suggestion for this point is that um, that may be going into too much details. I'm also not sure about uniform selection process. So the suggestion I have is we, we explain something like the selection of the review committee members should be conducted in an open, transparent, bottom-up process appropriate for each RIR region. There should be equal representation from each RIR region in constituting the review committee. So that's my um, suggestion. And uh, does anybody else have any comments about this? Uh, it doesn't have to be in the exact wording, but the general idea that we explain that this will be left up to the uh, RIR community, but we keep the open, bottom-up, uh, transparent process, and that the number of representatives will be equal for each RIR region. Hand from Paul. Hi uh, there, Izumi. I think earlier on today I saw an email that came from you where you had some text in there and you had replaced some words with the word the RIRs. Um, and I think I wrote back to the list and agreed uh, or supported your proposal. I think Alan did as well. And then there was a move to another point there. Um, could you cut and paste that text into here again for, for us to just have a read of this? Because if I look at this, Sure. I, I imagine this is, I mean, I, I, I'm sure that it will be done with the communities voting in wh whoever needs to stand in the, in the review committee. But I don't think the actual review committee selection process will be done by the communities. I think this will be conducted by the RIRs, um, who then, of course, facilitate this inside of their communities. So I just want to be clear on this because, I, you know, it's not like we're going to choose somebody from the APNIC region to run this process. I think it will be run uh, by the RIRs using the existing mechanisms they use to actually appoint these kinds of positions. And I would like to just stress again that I don't think we should be making up a new kind of mechanisms here. I think we should be standing true to the mechanisms we have and that have been serving us uh, quite well in these kinds of processes of selection. Thank you. Understood, Paul. And I agree with your point that the actual selection should be made by the RIR. So um, I, I can't cut and paste uh, on, on the chat somehow. I don't know what's wrong with my, um, with my uh, PC. Um, would somebody be able to uh, cut and paste um, from the text that I sent? So the version I sent is, um, the title of the thread is summary of discussions point for each issue. That's the title of the thread. And then there's a quote for this um, in the section that says D, selection of review committee. I, I actually uh, um, have the, uh, the quotation of my suggestion. So um, it would be helpful if somebody could uh, help me do this. Um, and uh, thank you for your point, Paul. So let's go to Alan in the meantime. Hello, Izumi. I'm Dr. Govind here. Yes, Dr. Govind, you have a point then. Um, uh, I will have you comment after Alan, because Alan seemed to have had an um, hand up. So um, okay, after okay, Alan, okay. you can um, yeah. speak. Yeah, OK, thank you. So Alan, please. OK, uh, thank you. On the selection of the review committee, um, yes, I agree with Paul. We should not put too much detail in. Um, and I agree with saying the RIRs rather than the RIR communities. Um, but I want to raise another point that uh, somebody, I forget who, somebody suggested that other communities such as the IETF should also be involved or, or invited to, to form part of the review committee. So I think we need to discuss that. And I gave my position in email that uh, if there's to be any voting, then voting should be from the RIR community members, um, but that we should probably leave it open for the review committee to seek advice from or have observers from other communities outside the RIRs. 
Thank you, Alan, for raising this point. This was something that I, I wanted to discuss um, as a second point, but it may be worth uh, discussing it together. Um, before we, we go on to um, talk about this point about additional communities, uh, let me first go to Dr. Govin. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Izumi. Sorry for coming late, but I have one question about selection. It is left to the RIR, but are we going to involve the law enforcement agencies and the other stakeholders for the numbers review committee? Um, so, I, so to clarify the question, you, you were like, your question was um, whether the RIL will um, involve the law enforcement agencies and any other relevant people who are actually involved in the RIL communities. Um, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, okay, um, so I think the idea is that um, we, we don't specify whether people should be from law enforcement agency or specific elements, but we just basically make sure that um, the representatives are chosen from each RIR region, and it's up to each RIR region whether they feel that we should uh, make sure to include a certain uh, type of uh, expertise or we just generally um, ask for representatives. So uh, that's the basic idea. Um, and uh, people, please uh, correct me if um, my understanding is different from yours. And um, so I'll first stop here and um, Dr. Govin, uh, let, let us know uh, once we've clarified um, whether people agree with my uh, explanation, whether this answers your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Security and stability of the internet ecosystem, law enforcement agencies are very important from that point of view. Or any other government representative, if they want to be the member of the review committee, like GAC in the ICANN. Okay, um, yes. I think I'm seeing comments um, from, I'm seeing a couple of hands. Um, so, um, and related to this particular point, I'm seeing people agreeing with uh, me that we, we don't specify any groups and um, about this. And so it's actually left up to each RIR community um, uh, what we do. So uh, you may very well feel that it's very important, but this may be something um, for each regional community to uh, address. So. Um, so that's the basic idea at this stage. And um, I do like to hear your um, comments about this, but I'm seeing a couple of hands related to this. So um, I'm seeing hands from Nurani, Andre, and Andres. Is this related to the points that we're discussing now? So um, let's uh, first go to Nurani. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I'm very comfortable with uh, if text that I, I, uh, I pasted in is, is correct. I'm very comfortable with that. Uh, maybe we should say uh, conducted in an open, transparent, bottom-up manner uh, instead, uh, or according to a bottom-up process. Uh, but that's nitpicking. And then I had a comment about Jim Reed's comments on the mailing list, but I, I can hold that for now if you want. That might be better because um, we we're first uh, trying to discuss about Dr. Govin's point. So um, I will definitely come back to this, Nirani, and I'll come back to you. Thank you. Um, yes. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, let's go to Andre. Hey, Zumi, my comment was related to uh, Jim's suggestion about IETF members. Uh, so I guess I'm in the same uh, line as Nirani, right? Yes, okay. Uh, how about, uh, yeah, yeah, so I'll, we'll get back to this. Yes, so uh, you will be after Nurani when we discuss this. So let's go to Andres. Yes, um, yeah, it, most of the questions that Dr. Lovin uh, sent were already clarified by you, Isumi, and also by the some colleagues in, in the chat room and uh, for, from Nurani also. So I just want to agree with them and I just want to clarify that. Uh, this review committee, when, when you say uh, in Urani that it's up to each RER to choose the representatives with the criteria that these RERs uh, 
uh, David David uh, the best strategy they have. Uh, this is something that maybe we should clarify in the group the spirit of this. When Paul posted uh, open and inclusive, uh, it's like the definition that bottom up of open and inclusive, the definition that of multiculturalism that we have and as areas, and maybe we can guarantee that as long as we guarantee that this is open and inclusive and bottom up, the, the process for choosing the representatives uh, is up to each area, and it's only focused for uh, reviewing the, the performance of the IN operate, operator, because uh, Dr. Gomez was comparing the GAC of ICANN with this, and uh, the, the, the differences are plenty. I establish that uh, the first difference could be uh, this is not involved uh, in the policy processes and the GAC uh, of ICANN is involved. And also, this is not something up to, to governments or they're, they're not uh, reserved seats for any group, just uh, three seats from each RER community or RER, uh, and the composition uh, is up to uh, each RER. So it would be good maybe to have some member for for one of these communities, but this is something that should be decided by uh, this, um, but but uh, by every area. So uh, I don't know uh, if we have to, if this is clear uh, clear now, and if we need to specify something more in the text. I I, I, thought, I thought we didn't uh, we didn't have the need to 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 make more clarification, but maybe. Uh, with these questions, now maybe we, we need to, to clarify more, or I don't know. Thank, thank you, Andre, all very much for um, confirming that you agree with others points that is sufficient to just um, um, describe the basic concept, which is open, bottom-up, and transparent, and also left up to each of our communities to, um, uh, um, in making the decision. And then the, the element about the government is, is not so directly relevant to the work um, of reviewing the SLA. So I do have um, um, a cue um, about um, about this from, from, I think, from Paul. I think you're next. Thank you very much, Susumi. As Dr. Govan uh, raises a very nice point, I think uh, Andres answered that uh, quite nicely. Uh, I would like to stress uh, from the RIPE region, I think that this holds true for all the RIRs, we have always been open to embrace any new stakeholders into our community. I think that's really the uh, the pillars of, of, of what has made us so successful as a bottom-up, open, and inclusive environment. Um, we have representatives from government on uh, working groups. We even have a government representative in the RIPE NCC board. Um, so we very much will be opening up this call if we're following the processes we follow with follow in, in all of these selections that we do, we will be opening and actually announcing this to all of the lists which reach law enforcement, government, uh, technical community, et cetera, that we have. So anyone would be free, I'm sure, uh, to come up in, in and uh, put themselves forward as candidates for nomination uh, to be selected. So yes, I think that if we use the word bottom-up, open, and inclusive, I think we cover anyone who would, any interested party that feels they want to be on the review committee. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for describing this. And um, given this um, situation of the right NCC region, um, I think even if you don't really be specific in language of particular stakeholder, we, we do add the word inclusive. That implies that if any government representative is interested, they, they could very well be the candidate. So um, may I confirm, Dr. Govin, whether this addresses your point um, or not? Yeah. Thank you, Zumi. Clarifications on that. Oh, so you, oh, so you, you, you are okay with this? Um, thank you, Dr. Govin, uh, for um, um, helping us confirm about this. Um, and thank you for raising this uh, point as well. And um, so we related to this point. Um, I'm seeing a comment from Mwanda. I think um, he's uh, pretty much describing his observation that the review committee's work is measure performance of the IANA operator. So members of the review committee will be chosen by representatives of RIR irrespective of their background. So I, I see that he's basically agreeing with this uh, conclusion. 
And so I think there are some text um, um, text suggestion changes to um, to my initial text suggestion, but it doesn't seem to be uh, very big. It's just like changing wording and maybe instead of transparent, you use the word inclusive and things like that. So um, maybe we can um, continue working on on the mailing list based on the general agreement that we actually. Um, at least the high level principles about the review committee selection and then the, the final select and then this will be uh, um, open to the community but the final selection will be made by the RIRs. So um, is everybody okay with this general um, direction and then uh, so please raise if you have any concern about this general direction. I'm not seeing any further hands, so um, let's work based on this. And then I'd like to um, discuss the points. Oh, Dr. Govan, did you want to say something? No, no, that's fine. Right. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Um, and then I'd like to um, cover the point raised by um, Jim Raid, which he, he mentioned that it may be worth having other representatives, such as um, IANA and IETF community. And I think Murani first on this point. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Well, uh, first, of course, I note that he, he gives his general support for the uh, proposal. Uh, so he didn't, it was not an objection raised, uh, it, it was just a comment. Um, but then I was wondering, and I don't want to guess here, but I. Uh, I was wondering, given the way he put his comments, that maybe he uh, was under the impression that this was a general review committee, and then maybe it's worth clarifying that this is just a review committee that is looking, helping uh, look at the IAN operator's performance in relation to the numbers community. I'm not suggesting that we change any text in the proposal, but just that we clarify that on the list. Thank you. Yeah, Narani, I think that personally makes sense to me, and um, I'd like to go to um, Andre. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Narani, and I think um, I don't see a need for any formal representation of the ITF interests on this review committee. Um, I think while we uh, stress that there needs to be some collaboration, I think with regards to performance and this particular work, I think the, the, the statement of work is very clearly specified, and there are no such interdependency that would require some other kind of organizations formally represent themselves on the review committee. But I agree with Nuranya that maybe clarification makes sense. Yeah, I think that totally makes sense. Uh, so I agree with both of your comments, um, Nurani and Andre. So we don't make any text changes, and we do actually make it very clear to Jim that um, so that he doesn't, or the other members of the community, doesn't misunderstand. Um, and this is simply based on the review for the SLA on the number of resources community on uh, the, the function of the IANA, which doesn't have direct effect on any of the other functions. So I think we've agreed on uh, on the point that is raised related to um, the selection of the review committee. We've covered all the points, and then we will last go to the uh, the point about budget review. So um, will we already pass uh, roughly um, uh, 30 minutes um, from the initial plan, but I'd like to at least extend the call until um, 11.30 um, to make sure we, we cover all the points. And um, so review, uh, reviewing budget. Um, so Sun is actually saying that um, so RIRs actually give uh, budget to the ICANN, and may I know if ICANN represents any annual budget specifically for this contribution? If yes, who does the review? If no, then um, it should be incorporated in our proposal, and it should be something that NO can do. I'm actually not sure how this is relevant to the NIS stewardship transition, and uh, but before I answer this, I think it might be better if somebody who's very familiar with the situation uh, will be able to um, 
propose a position first rather than myself who's not really uh, following the budget situation between uh, RIRs and ICAT. Anybody willing to do that? Thanks, Craig. I'm happy to explain my understanding. So at the moment, um, the NTIA contract with ICANN is a zero dollar contract. So there's no money that changes hand under the existing NTIA, ICANN, IANA functions contract. Um, between the RIRs and ICANN, um, through the NRO, there is a voluntary payment uh, of around 800 and something thousand uh, per year. Um, it's a voluntary contribution and there is, uh, as John Curran I think has pointed out on the mailing list, um, it's, a, it's a voluntary contribution. There's actually no legal obligation to do that, and, but the RIRs have been contributing to this fund um, for, for, forever, basically. So I think the, one, of the contract, one of the questions that's being asked is whether going forward um, our SLA that we're talking about actually contemplates uh, the paying of a fee. And I, it's, it's been an issue that's been on my mind, but I dare not raise it because it's going to open up a Pandora's box at this point, but I think that's where that's heading. Understood. Thank you. And I know, Alan, that um, John Curran has the arm races, but um, we haven't really formed the team position on this, so I feel that so we want to discuss a position. So I see Andre and Alan. So um, first go to Andre. Yeah, I agree with Craig. It might open a sort of a can of worms. Um, well, one thing I think we need to avoid that this 800K plus is confused with a potential fee for the contract, right? Unless we want clearly to specify that area communities prefer a no-cost contract in this case as well, which I would doubt makes sense. I would actually include something uh, related to cost recovery but because I think that's how we would approach this if we were negotiating this contract with some independent contractor for providing the services. That it's not for profit, it's just on cost recovery basis, and maybe that's something that we could include in as a requirement, as a principle. Thank you, Andre. Um, Alan? Right. Uh, Thank you. Um, my suggestion is to leave any discussion of fees out of this proposal. We do not need to discuss it in the document, um, but we can reply on the mailing list to say something along the lines of, uh, we expect the RIR staff and boards when negotiating this contract with ICANN um, to discuss anything related to fees at that time. Oh, and on the cost recovery point, um, I think ICANN's pretty good at uh, incurring very high costs, so uh, we might not want to say that. Okay, um, thank you for this point, Alan. Um, so I see agreement with um, Alan's point on, uh, from Andres and um, Paul. And so, so we, we will say that uh, this will be uh, for discussions between ICANN um, staff and RIR and um, because it's, it's very difficult for the community to uh, make a judgment on what would be uh, uh, good, good for the budget and it, it's not directly, um, well, so, um, so, so that may, that's the rationale that I understand we'll, we will be explaining. But if there's anything else to add to the rationale of why we're not incorporating this uh, as a part of the proposal, then uh, please uh, share it um, either on the chat or raise your hand. I'm not seeing any uh, comments or hands, so we we'll, would we'll go with the rationale that um, this is the best to be sorted out between RIRs and ICANN at the time of implementation. Uh, uh, then, but um, Izumi, Izumi, yes, I'm Dr. Govind. Yeah, uh, what is the purpose of this budget review agenda here? Whether whether uh, the CRISP committee has to see that what are the amount get corrected and how it is going to be spent? 
or what is the general approach needed to be done in this space or anything else i would like to be more educated on this uh, sorry so are you talking about the review committee i some the sound from my side is not so good to no, hear your budget comment review, budget. so on budget, review. budget so you're talking about the budget um would you mind to either repeat your question or would you mind to either also like chat or comment on the chat um so let's try um, for you to comment again and if i can't hear you maybe better um um if you could uh, send te text of your question on the chat i'm sorry that you have to go through this okay so would you mind to repeat your question yeah my question is what is the budget review is it this budget how it is to be spent uh, between rirs and i can or is it some way to you know spend for the more a uh, public good kind of thing or promotional activity um so you're saying we 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 describe some kind of um general principle related to the budget review that uh, the budget review will be conducted for the good for the public um that that's that's what i seem to have captured from your comment and um I hope that is correct. Um, is that a correct term um, hearing of what you said? Yeah. Okay. So, so the idea is to include some high-level principle that budget review should be um, conducted for the good of the the um, uh, for, for the public uh, interest. Um, and so, um, I'd like to hear people's comment about this point, adding this uh, high-level principle about the budget review. suggested by Dr. Govin. Okay. Do people have any comments? No need to mention budget or budget review at all. That's what Alan is saying and um maybe to the RIR to work out um um any other comments related to this? We may want to um provide some rationale why we leave it to uh the RIR to work this out including this the uh, high level principle. Well, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with the suggestion now. Um would you be able to share the rationale on why you are suggesting this approach, Alan? Um Yes, okay. Um I think we're already leaving almost all the contract negotiations to the RIRs. Um so why should we need to micromanage this part of it? Um you know so so if there's any kind of rationale or or principle that we need to provide um can't that be done as a response on the mailing list? I I don't see a need to put it in the document. Does that make sense to you Dr. Govin or do you have any additional um comments about this point? No, no thanks that's all. No comment. Okay, is that clarified? Okay, um thank you for bringing this point up. So, our conclusion is that uh Andre, um please. I'm I'm I apologize to kind of, you know, wasting some of your time, but I just want to uh, respond to Dr. Govin's point and maybe that is related to the previous point we discussed. I think we're coming to those issues because we haven't nailed it down our approach how we plan to approach this kind of negotiation on the cost of the contract that's not to nail it down the number but saying is it on cost recovery basis is it at i mean any other principle i don't know and this the seems to me that nailing this principle down at this stage is important so if we say cost recovery principle then i think the budget review and all the other stuff it just doesn't it doesn't look so important because we already covered the general approach right and i think of course areas will figure out what are the cost what is the recovery thing but i mean given the service we are getting from ayana for the area community um i would be very skeptical that the number would be very high even taking all the overhead 
-hmm. Thank you, Andre. So you feel that we actually um, important that we we cover this point on how we the the, the basic concept about uh, the the cost recovery, um, how how the cost will be based, not the actual number, but how we think about this. And then, if we consider this point, then this issue of uh, budget review will be will be addressed. That's your point, Andre. That's how I understood your point. And I have Nurani, so please, Nurani. Thank you. Having listened to the comments, um, I tend to agree that, uh, as with all the other detailed discussions we've had relation in, in relation to the contract, we've agreed to uh, keep it on a principal level. Uh, and I, I, I think I agree with Andre's point, but this is a matter of this is a principal uh, point. I. I totally take Alan's point about ICANN having a tendency to incur costs, but on the other hand, um, that is also the reason you want to put that in here, right? Um, and if it, if this fee then becomes uh, unreasonably high, then that is, is um, a reason to change uh, ICANN operator. I also think that the point, I don't know who made the point, but I think the point about separating Making it clear that this is a separate fee from what uh, the RIR contribute to ICANN is very important uh, as well for, for this particular reason, to separate the IANA operator and the cost of a uh, service provided and uh, any other relationship that the RIRs have with ICANN. Uh, so Andre is agreeing with Nurani's point on separation, and that we are very clear about how we contribute to ICANN as a whole organization, and then our fee for the IANA operation. These are two separate issues. So thank you for raising this point, Nurani. And um, so I think there seems to be a, a disagreement on what kind of um, thing we will add related to the cost recovery. So um, my current suggestion is, for example, state something like um, um, it will be um, the RIR and ICANN will um, negotiate um, the, the cost of um, the agreement, uh, the, the fee for the agreement uh, on what is reasonable for the both parties um, and uh, such as um, an example, um, the, the, um, just of basing on the fees of the cost recovery. So it's not a list a specific example, but then they uh, leave the clause that it is left up to the RIRs and the ICANN. Uh, would this suggestion uh, sound reasonable to everybody? So Nirani is saying, I would be interested in hearing Alan's response to this. Does this make sense to you, Alan? Uh, yes, sure. So are we proposing to put something like this in the same section where we discuss the principles of the SLA? Uh, that's section 3.a.3. Um, that is my understanding, yeah. unless anybody okay. have any other um, comments. Sure, I'm not opposed to the idea of, of adding the principles like that. Um, I think it's not necessary, but I'm not opposed to doing it. So if someone has text they want to propose on the mailing list, uh, yes, we can discuss it further. Thank you, Alan, for agreeing with the principle, and thank you again, uh, Paul, for uh, clarifying that we will be uh, negotiating with the IAN operator, not directly mention IAN. That's an excellent point. Um, thank you. I agree with this. So um, <laughs> I'm happy to draft a text uh, suggestion. It's a starting point of the discussions, and uh, I, I don't feel I'm a, a, an expert in this, but very much welcome comments from um, others uh, about this text suggestion. And so, um, so the basic concept is we say that we, we leave it to the, um, the IANA operator and the RIR about the actual cost of the contract, the fees for the contract. And one example of this is to have a cost recovery model. So that's a basic concept. So thank you, John, for uh, clarifying that you see no reason, but not opposed if others feel strongly. OK, 
Okay, so um, I will send uh, this uh, text to suggestion and we can take a look at the review and uh, see if it makes sense to add this in the SLA contract. Uh, the, the section, so section uh, 3A3. Okay, so if no further comments are related to uh, 5E or any of the points that we've covered, well, oh, actually, um, we haven't actually um, covered uh, four agenda item number four. So I think we, we've covered um, what we should do for each of the points. Um, and then, um, so I would uh, do like to do a quick uh, summary on this. So uh, on five A on dispute resolution, um, there's uh, no consensus to change the current document. Um, um, to add more details of this uh, arbitration than we do in the current document. And then, um, but we can um, actually add a, a, a de description in our proposal that uh, we plan to uh, consult the community um, when before fixing the SLA. And Andre has volunteered to draft on this part. And then related to details of the SLA, I think this is the first point covered um, by um, Andre, um, which is a point that is mentioned by Richard, and all other points which is mentioned by Jim Ray and uh, Gerard. Well, um, uh, Jim Ray, we need to answer to him on the mailing list, but no change to um, the draft. Um, and then Gerard, we, we just uh, already replied, so no, no further action. And MOU and contract necessary. Um, this is um, Craig will draft a, a response and he will explain on the global list. And um, so, but there's no need to change um, any part of our proposal. Um, 5D selection of review committee. Um, I've sent the text to suggestion on the list, and um, and I think we'll. Uh, we still welcome uh, any revision, but I think the basic concept has been agreed. So we will be making a chain uh, addition of this explanation on a proposal. And on the point uh, Jim Ray has, made, has raised, the IANA and possibly the IETF um, interest uh, to be represented, we explained to Jim Ray about this. So, um, sorry, I think from um, earlier point on Jim Ray about uh, the SLA, would we just uh, I don't think we need any uh, additional action or explanation. Um, just to explain that we will be consulting on um, the community at the time of fixing the XLA. And then, um, oh, and I think we haven't covered about the use of the word NRO. Um, and I, I see um, a suggestion from Alan to use the word NRO. Um, uh, to replace the word NRO with RIR. So if everybody agrees with this, then um, I think we can simply replace the part that says NRO with RIR. Agree to use RIRs. No, I see no other comments. So let's replace the part that says NRO. On, on, on the part that uh, describes about the review on com uh, review committee selection, that's the part that we will be replacing. That's my suggestion. But uh, Paul, do you feel differently? Sorry, Zumi, did you ask me? My my uh, WebEx was cutting there. I, I didn't catch you. Oh sure. So um. Paul, I think you've agreed that we will be replacing the word NRO with RIR. And um, there's a, a clarification question whether we will be replacing with all parts of our document or we just cover the part that explains about the review committee. Well, it's probably better to be consistent um, so that there is no confusion by, by anyone that's reading this, this document that isn't in the know as maybe some of us are on this call. So. It might just be smart to use RIR. So uh, to replace all parts of the document that says NRO with the RIR. That's it cannot be blanket. Uh, so Mwenda, are you disagreeing with this? 
we have to use according to context. Yes, I am disagreeing. Sometimes you can find there is a place we have used uh, NRO in a different context that RIR will not fit in. So we'll just use our logic when we are editing the document to know where RIR will fit and where NRO will still remain NRO. Okay, understood. So I think uh, at this point we, we are not having a clear uh, agreement. So let's say that we have agreed at least to cover um, the part about the review committee. We will replace um, the word NRO with RIR. With other parts, it might be better if we just uh, list up all the parts that says NRO now and then confirm if it makes sense to replace with RIR. That may be a, a better approach than discussing it here and it's, it's better, better to see the, the specific details, I think. So um, I, I would like to ask for a volunteer um, to work on this, um, this editorial um, um, to reflecting these uh, points. <coughs> um, <coughs> first, um, I would like to um, ask a volunteer who is happy to list all the points that says and I'll all and then see which part, uh, which part needs to be uh, addressed. That's, I, that's one volunteer that I would like to ask for. And then I would also like to um, ask for a volunteer to work on um, all the editorial changes that have been listed. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe we can incorporate this uh, two parts. So <laughs> sorry for the confusion. So uh, I would like to ask for the volunteer to work on all the editorial changes, including uh, replacing the word NRO with RIR. So um, come up with the, the editorially corrected version on, on, on all the points that are being um, expressed um, on this list. And uh, so I'm assuming it may be too much for Michael to work on this in addition to all the other changes. But um, if Michael can work on this, then that would be great. Um, I see Alan's hand up. Um, Alan, did you want to comment on this process? or? Uh, yes, please. Um, I volunteer to go through the document looking for places where NRO or NROEC should be changed to RIRs. Um, I also volunteer to edit the uh, changes that I've proposed myself. And I would suggest that other people who have proposed editorial changes should also make those themselves and send uh, track changes documents back to Michael for integration into the master document so that we don't overload Michael with that, trying to do all the work. And from Nirani. Thank you. Uh, and thanks, Alan, for, for uh, volunteering to do that. Just, uh, uh, I guess, a, actually, uh, I think Paul sort of took the words out of my mouth. I, just, just to make sure, as we're in the very, very last um, part of the process, uh, I think before we make any further changes, it'd be good to, to have a version where we see all the changes that we've already suggested and agreed on incorporated. Uh, and then I just want to make sure that we have a process where we don't uh, when we don't have several people sending several versions uh, ending up confusing uh, whoever's holding the pen. Um, I'm happy to assist in any way uh, I'm needed, but I think it's good if we have one central point of, of edit. Um, I don't have a clear uh, suggestion of a way forward. More, it's more of a question, how do we make sure to do this as efficiently as possible, but also to avoid any uh, confusion at this point. Thank you, Nurani, for this point. And I think Michael has to, um, um, has to express comment on the list that um, he can work on it, but perhaps, perhaps assistance from someone would be good to ensure confirmation of changes be, to be made. And I go to Alan. Uh, thanks. Um, I agree with Paul and uh, Nurani that we need a central point of contact or, or coordinator, and it, it wasn't my intent to, to propose anything different. I was just proposing distributing the workload a little. Um, it's my understanding that 
that Microsoft Word hasn't has the ability to to incorporate changes from another document. You can take two versions and merge them if they've been done with uh, change tracking or red line tracking. So uh, I might be wrong about that. I don't use Microsoft Word myself, but if it does have the ability to take the red line changes from multiple documents and create a single red line document, then I I don't see why we can't distribute the workload in that way and nevertheless avoid confusion by having a single master document controlled by Michael. Okay, thank you for this uh, point. And I see a comment from Wandua. If we have a collaborative online document, it, should, it would be easier for us all to use it. Otherwise, we might need to use Google Docs. Um, yes, and I actually, um, so yeah, for the future steps, we, we might want to consider this. But I want to keep track um, to keep the existing the process that we, we have been using. So keep uh, Michael as the single pen, and then Alan has compiled all this, um, the summary from his point of view. And then I'm happy to list all the points that have been suggested by anybody else, so that Michael can uh, um, can confirm what are the points that are being uh, suggested. And um, so that's my suggestion. Um, and I see hand from Al, uh, from Andre and um, and from Michael as well. So first go to Andre. I think uh, not substantive editorial changes. I would prefer to see a draft as a baseline before we introduce uh, issues that we discussed on this call from item five. To me, it makes more sense if someone holds the, the pen, and we can all assist this, this person. I think that person is, is Michael. Thank you, Michael, for that. Um, to produce this kind of clean version, baseline version, which is uh, non-controversial, right, also for the community, because there were some editorial changes, really, that doesn't change the content. Um, and then we can introduce specific new issues that we confirmed uh, in item five of our discussion, and that will allow us to articulate those issues better in the document and also articulate the changes in the document so the community can see more clearly what was introduced. Thank you. So this is basically similar to the approach we took for the first version and that personally makes sense to me. Um, so while um, co co welcoming comments from others, I'd like to go to Michael next. Yes, thank you, Izumi. Um, so in terms of trying to make sure that we have an efficient way of working on this, I have no problem being the central point so that we can create a very clean um, red line uh, and clean version versus the last uh, proposal draft. And I'm okay with uh, Andre's suggestion either way, whatever the group decides, if we want to do an editorial draft first that has non-controversial issues and then a clean one, I'm happy to, um, to devote time to that if we need to. Uh, the only thing, and, and I'm open to suggestions on how to handle this, is one item that that occurred in the last uh, the last draft was I did get multiple um, revisions on the same section, and uh, I was able to kind of try to clean that up and, and clarify. But I know there was a little bit of confusion, so um, I'm not exactly sure how to accommodate that. It didn't really happen very much, but um, in terms of trying to meet this very tight deadline that we have. I'm curious if anybody has some uh, suggestions on how we would handle that. Um, it doesn't seem like a terrible problem, and if there are items of conflict that come up, I can actually reach out to the people that send uh, draft language over to me so we can clarify, and maybe that was uh, one of the issues that uh, we could change from the last draft proposal. Um, but if anybody has any other uh, suggestions, I'd be happy to hear them. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I think that's an excellent point. I actually wanted to cover this uh, in, in the last uh, call related to this process. So my suggestion for editorial uh, changes, um, I think it's, it's, it's not controversial. So um, you can basically incorporate uh, all the points. And then if any of the points seems to be um, making different suggestions on the same sentence, then Michael, I think it would be helpful if you could highlight and confirm with the list. So with the editorial suggestion, um, that's the way to um, that that's the way I suggest. And then uh, regarding the, the text changes for um, for um, <coughs> for substantial part, which we've covered in item five of our agenda, uh, so adding new elements, 
I suggest that we stick to the people who actually took initiative in um, in um, drafting each uh, draft set, um, draft text um, in, in this um, in the second document. For example, uh, section three um, uh, two. I think IPR section was uh, handled by Andre. Uh, section three was handled by uh, Paul and Rani. Um, three. Uh, three, four, uh, covering the review committee, was uh, handled by um, Alan. So we, we go work on that. So these people will actually uh, take responsibility in making sure we have the, the final um, text for confirmation before we have the, um, the, the comment, uh, the deadline period within the Chris team. So if you would like to uh, make additional text suggestions, make sure you, uh, you comment to the text of the person who is in charge of this particular uh, section. So that's uh, my suggestion. Um, and um, I, um, <coughs> so I'd like to first see if there are any other comments and if people seem to have issues with this. I, I suggest we take this on the mailing list um, and better to confirm on the mailing list. And then we will reconfirm at the call today about how, how we work on this, including this the timeline um, on how we would be um, incorporating comments within the Chris team and the schedule for before we find um, we submit the draft to the ICG. So I'm not seeing any further comments. So um, the suggestion is that we work on both. The, uh, we will first uh, draft the, the editorial, purely editorial version, no substantial changes in terms of the content. Context on uh, the contents. We will publish this first uh, with the community, and then at the second step, um, uh, we, we publish the part that incorporates the suggestions from the community where we covered in our um, agenda item five. And then um, um, when working on agenda item five text changes, um, the people who will uh, um, submit the text changes to uh, Michael will be those who are responsible for these sections um, when we drafted the second draft, which I will list the names of people per section. So you can confirm whether you're comfortable with this, uh, uh, this responsibility. So I'm not seeing further hands. Um, oh, Nirani, please. I'm very sorry to take the floor. I, I just want to, to make sure that I understand what you're proposing. Are you proposing that we will first see uh, a, a, a clean document with all the editorial changes uh, uh, incorporated, and then those of us who uh, were responsible for writing uh, particular sections, so for example, I handled section five, I am then responsible to try to incorporate uh, any suggestions from the, the community or from this group that we feel that we have agreed on. I should then propose wording and send that to the list or send that to Michael. Um. Uh, thank you for this confirmation. So um, I wasn't, um, so my suggestion was um, um, for section uh, five, for example, um, you will, in, uh, you will observe only um, the text suggestion within the Chris team. So we would have uh, confirmed, confirmed the position about this and text the suggestion is made, um, made based on this, uh, um, this uh, un common understanding. So there's no need for you to respond to, um, to the IANA Global List or um, a draft any suggestions yourself um, based on any of the, the suggested, uh, uh, any of the uh, issues being raised. So um, simply, um, maybe there are other people who will be uh, making text suggestion in your section, and for example, section five. So maybe I will be proposing, uh, please change this part. And then maybe there will be another person who will say, hey, please change this part. But before uh, we send the, uh, the final text uh, suggestion to, um, to Michael, it's your responsibility to, to see um, what would be the changes to be incorporated and uh, send this text to 
um, the incorporated text suggestion. And then people, I think we will be making final comments um, on, the, uh, on the text suggestion as the next phase. And then people in the Chris team should comment on this version that is sent from the Chris team member responsible for this particular section. Uh, so uh, you shouldn't uh, make an, a new text suggestion in a separate thread so that Michael can simply confirm what are the comments that are being made um, on the text suggestion for uh, section five based on the, the, the draft that you've sent um, uh, for, for section five, that would be Nurani's suggestion. So people will send comments on Nurani's uh, su suggestion. Um, I, I wonder if that is uh, clear enough. And um, maybe it's better for me to write uh, this on the mailing list, but rather than um, explaining this verbally, and then people can see and um, ask questions on the list and any clarifications needed, and we can discuss this again at the meeting. And I see a hand from Andre. If I understand, thank you, Yuzumi. If I understand Alan's comment, I think that's pretty much in line of my thinking. I think once we uh, have the baseline document with non-controversial non issues integrated, um, uh, the substantive changes, they are substantive, but editorial, they're very small. I think it's, we're talking about one or two sentences. And perhaps it's, it's easier for us to basically have a uh, mail thread on Chris' mailing list, basically nailing down those two sentences and then asking Michael to integrate them. It might be simpler, but all in all, I agree with you. We should probably uh, describe the process on email rather than just agreeing now on the, on the call. Yes, indeed. And um, I, I'm just trying to address the point that the issue we had at the, at the last time for the, the second draft, that several people were suggesting text changes for the same part, and it's sort of like, um, caused a, a little bit of an issue, which we actually did resolve. So um, so I'll, I'll, I'll send my suggestion, and if it doesn't make sense to others, we can um, stick to the part that um, the, the process that Alan has suggested. But what I'm suggesting in addition is just to ensure that we are not going to have the overlap uh, text suggestion on the same part and uh, cause last minute confusion. So that's at least my intention. And I will certainly send my suggestion to the to the main. Now, Ronnie, was is this an old hand, or is this a? Um, did you want to speak? I, I think I'll, I'll keep it yeah, short. But I think thank you, Alan, for for uh, listing it. And I understand. I think I understand what you're trying to do. I'll, I'll read your mind when you send it out. Uh, as for the substantive changes, could I suggest that we then list uh, changes that need to happen? That might make it easier to see, okay, here there are no substantive changes in this section, or this section has uh, five substantive changes, uh, this section has so and so many. That makes it easier to uh, ensure that we don't lose track of any of the changes that need to go in there. Does that make sense? Sure, totally, and I think that's what. Uh, um, um, yes, I, 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 that makes sense. So I will list all the substantive changes for um, 5A, which is something that is needed um, anyways for our process um, tracking. Uh, so I'll do that um, after the call. And. Um, so um, we will confirm online uh, about the process of how we will be uh, incorporating the final um, draft, including the timeline and um, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and then as a, an action suggested from Nirani, I'll list all the substan substantive changes that we've discussed uh, in the call today. So um, thank you very much for hold, you know, um, um, coping um, with this long call, including all the observers who are, who are at the call. And I think we've covered all the um, all the actions um, and issues listed on the agenda. So I'd like to confirm the next meeting, which I think we we agreed at the last call. We have meetings every day from now on. So the next meeting will be tomorrow, 13th of January, the same time, UTC on um, 13. 
And um, if nothing else that you feel would like to discuss, um, I'd like to uh, close the call. Um, so I see a, a chat, a comment from Michael. Um, to the, um, for your information, or Michael will do so and to the extent that we can, he can. Be looking at formatting, grammar, etc. But always welcome suggestions, and um, and then he will be moving forward with the the, um, the working on the editorial um, version first, and then um, get this to be uh, finalized in preparation for Thursday's deadline. So thank you, Michael, for confirming this. And uh, so thank you very much all for um, joining the call for such a long time. And uh, so talk to you again tomorrow, and we'll keep engaged online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zumi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.